we'll begin with uh, the last work in the Lagoon Cycle. We did it in 78. What happened was we asked a question. We thought from that point on that global warming was really going to take over. It was pretty clear. Um, the evidence was boundless back in even in the 70s. And so we posed the question, could we help each other? And this is the text we came up with. The ocean is a great draftsman. It is said that if all the ice melted, the oceans would rise about 300 feet. So we drew a line as best we could at the 300 foot level and thought about how the land would shrink as the oceans grew. And the waters will rise slowly at the boundary, at the edge, redrawing that boundary continually, moment by moment, all over, all together, all at once. It is a graceful drawing and redrawing, this response to the millennia of the making of fire. And as the waters rise slowly in the Red Sea and the Dead Sea, the Caspi in the north, the Baltic in the black, the ocean gyres will redraw themselves, as will the currents and the tides. And over time, gracefully, this raising tide will flow up every river that once flowed down to the sea. And each fresh water tongue will withdraw before the advance of the salt up the St. Lawrence, the Columbia, the Amazon, the White Nile, and the Blue, the Volga, the Don, and the Danube, and the Thames, the Seine, and the Loire, the Rhone, and the Rhine, and the Garonne, the Ganges, the Congo, the Tigris, and the Euphrates, the Yellow, the Amur, the Irrawaddy, the Lena, the Potomac, and the Snake, and all the rivers named and unnamed, and the floodplains farmed upon and lived upon will become marshes or swamps or bogs or beds for swollen rivers or even shallow inland seas. And the tropics will become uninhabitable and the far north will become possibly temperate. And corn and rice and wheat and beans and plantain, manioc and yams and all the grains and starchy roots known and unknown, named and unnamed, will have to grow elsewhere than now. And most life, known and unknown, will have to go elsewhere than now. As vast parts of the eastern seaboard of the United States, and parts of Europe near the North Sea, and parts of the South America near the Amazon, and China somewhere, and Russia in some parts, and in this new beginning, this continuously rebeginning, will you feed me when my lands can no longer produce? And will I house you when your lands are covered with water so that together we can withdraw as the oceans rise? So that's the name of the game we're facing this very minute. Uh, we wrote it 35 years ago. It was so obvious to us. Um, the key question here is not the science of it, not the fact that we've let loose these forces, but how will we adapt? And this talk that we're giving now poses the question through a series of works beginning in the last 10 years of how one can one adapt at scale? Can one adapt at the million square kilometer scale? And we'll pose, the, we'll, we'll suggest that it's possible, but we'd have to shift away from the military industrial complex and the monies that are spent there into uh, an eco-security system of great dimension.